Paris again. And that is what they can't deal with. I want to observe the protocol well established before me and to say thanks to all the citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis for tuning in to tonight's public forum. And I say thank you especially to each and every one of you who came out this afternoon on your Whitson Sunday to be part of this special reporting which we are doing. My heart is blessed when I see so many of you. Indeed, from all over, you have come. From Bird Rock, I see my friend Rubina Nisbet, and I say thank you, proud of you. You are a friend, as Shirley says, who is there for good times and bad times. I want to say thank you to Rosa, all the way from East Pass there, formerly of number seven, for coming out. And to my dearest friend Dawn, so pleased to see you. She took time away from church to come because she wanted me to know what I already knew, that I am her big friend. And to all of you who have come from the Unity family, I say thank you. And I could tell you no matter what the way we may say, no matter what the desperados for power will say, I stand firm with the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And there is none out there, and there is none anywhere who could disclose any matter that will cause the people of St. Kitts and Nevis to be ashamed. I came to the office of Prime Minister, perhaps better prepared than most. Perhaps better prepared than most. When I came to the office of the Prime Minister, I had served in almost every ministry of government. When I came to the office of the Prime Minister, I came having delivered excellently in every ministry in which I had been put. When I came to the office of the Prime Minister, I had done my apprenticeship in government. When I came to the office of the Prime Minister, I had been accustomed to polls and polling. And every election which we fought under the former administration, it was the performance of Dr. Harris that led the way in education, in foreign affairs, in agriculture and housing. My record is yet to be touched. In the first term, as a Minister of Housing, I delivered 1,207 housing units across the length and breadth of the country. I did so well, Douglas, get jealous of me. Say so want another minister. They delivered four hundred housing units from the public sector day after from a high of 1207 to 400 units my work speaks for itself and 25 years of serving I the people of number seven you can say faithfully how is again how is again how is again And I am confident. You see some of them who hustling 
the better to understand one man in the land with the grace of God will determine election is Timothy Harris. If they want it tomorrow, I will win in number seven. How many of them? How many of them are ready? How many of them? Talk is cheap, but whiskey costs. Whiskey costs. Wolves in sheep clothing. Many are they. And as you mature, you understand the nature of life. While well, the Bible says man's heart is desperate and wicked. And when I think of Denzel Douglas, I recall the Bible says a man's heart is desperate and wicked. So tell them, we have work to do, and I am committed to do the work of the people. It is the work of the people that I have done so well, which gave me confidence in 2015 to literally abandon my constituency and go in East, in West, in Central, in Four, in Six, everywhere and earth to deliver the seeds for unity. I did that, asked the candidates. Who else were there? Ah, who else were there? So when the wolves in sheep clothing think that they are ready, ah, ah, devil is a bad man. I am committed, as I said in 2015, that I will serve this country as its most illustrious prime minister for 10 years. And after that, I will not come back harping for prime ministership like what list Denzel Douglas. After 20 years, he won't come back. All time something, come back again, never. All time something, our Douglas be. The all time something, reeking in corruption, that is what we have left behind. And Douglas is hoping, as Patty says, that we will make the mistake. Either you could have Barabbas or you could have Christ. Douglas is hoping you will make the wrong choice. Douglas is building his pathway to victory. That there will be confusion in the unity. But that is the only way. If unity breaks up, because unity gets silly, because unity, like those in the Bible, who when they were taken from suffering, and they were taken to go yonder, having got the blessing of yonder, they begin to argue. They begin to say they ain't get enough. They begin to say they are a bigger part and a smaller part. That is what Douglas is coping for. But people smarter than Douglas. It's because you were smarter why unity came. You were smart. 70% of the country determined in polls after polls. Including the Labour Party poll. That they wanted unity. Everywhere they can vast the people. 
including the polls by cadre. The people said they wanted Dr. Harris. No, me tell them, say so. For I wasn't even Paul. But people everywhere understood the imperative of the time. That the country was going down in the mire and clay. That Douglas was going to extreme. And you needed a young man committed to action. Intelligent experience with the patience also. That is a virtue. To come forward and to lead the country at such a time as this. Hmm? 70 odd percent. We can get to that. And so throughout the country. So when some of them come with the mischief, with Timothy the only one, a wannabe no? A wannabe no? It's throughout the length and breadth of the country I mobilize voters into action. I just will tell you, I know never the street to the back of my hand. I know John Street. I know the alleyways. You see me so guy over there? You. Why you think she here? It's me as she boy. It's me as she boy. I went to the heart of the people where it matters and from which love pours and establish a connection that is enduring. When the time comes, when the time comes and I'm ready to do battle, you, the people, will stand like courageous soldiers with the leadership of Dr. Timothy Harris. And I won't lead you astray, but I will lead you to victory in which I am practice. I will lead Team Unity again into victory. I want to thank Rambo of East Pass there for mobilizing and to come. And before I came here, I get text after text. He said they put in the labor chat that Timothy go and go resign tonight. <laughs> so people must come to government headquarters tomorrow. I will warn them go down there like a puppy show. <laughs> that is what they put in the chat. I wanted to make it very clear, we came here to report that I am not resigning tonight, I'm not resigning tomorrow, I'm not resigning next week, I'm not resigning next year. So long as God give me the wellness and soundness of body and mind, we will go as we promised 10 years of service for Dr. Timothy Harris as the Federation's Prime Minister. That is what we committed to the people. So let them take that message. And let me say to Denzel Douglas, Denzel, you ain't a match for me. Douglas, you ain't a match for me. Ain't a match for me. Douglas is in politics now to satisfy a vendetta. And the vendetta is directed mostly against Cyrus because had I not left the party and he's fired me, that the party would have been in government. He had had a long history of almost annihilating the opposition. It's 20 long years. Douglas knew that the opposition could not unseat him. 
It took unity. It took unity. And if unity is the solution, he could only get there if we make a mockery of what was the winning formula. Some of them, with a confused mind, over the last couple of days, they said they want Timothy to answer. Answer to what? Answer to what? Is my name being called in something? And if the matak chalala, what has me got in that? What has me got in that? Them up in England, the matak chalala, and here say, and them say, me the recent kids working hard for the people who cause missing chala la fa. Me no in the pocketary. So what am I to say? People attack and people say what they like. I am not there with them. When I was in London, I met with the queen. I sat at the queen table for dinner. I met with the princess. I met with the prince. Me know in a hide. I met with the prime minister at number 10 Downing Street. And I met with her for dinner. And it was their security taking me around. And around. And the young man there from Sandy Point Hard was with me. He said, boss, I get a break. For the security, I do a good job. I said, Had you better look on and see if we could learn anything. <laughs> Nobody asked me no question when I was there. In the reach. They wine me and they dine me. Like a distinguished prime minister I am. That is how it is. Now I come home and people are trying to chala la. I'm not getting myself in that. So those who have made themselves a puppy show on the radio. Timothy must say something. How are going to say and I'm not there with them? How are going to say when I don't know what is the truth from the lie for what people are say? How am I going to say when at paragraph 86 of the judgment, the judge itself says, or the judge said, that they can adjudicate with respect to the reliability of the transcript. They won't get in into that because it was a motion, if you will, the substantive matter not yet heard. The people were saying the police captured document unlawfully and they went to get the judge to review. So the judge looked at the transcript and the judge said at paragraph 86, nothing they say in the judgment is a final adjudication of the precise meaning of the transcript. The judge said they ain't getting to what the transcript means. But down here, some people who want to be in things want to bring me in and to say that me involved in bribery. Nobody can bribe me. Nobody can bribe me. I burn poor. I understand hard life. I go to Mango Garden in Tabernacle, wake up before Willie Paul to get the ripest and the best mangoes for breakfast, lunch. I understand poverty. You think champagne could get me to change my mind? That is why I don't drink it. You think wine could impact my judgment on behalf of the people? I hardly drink it. Juicy don't drink it. Patrice can't get enough of it. And Vance take an occasional shot at it. Them things have no meaning. No meaning. Watch and show 
and those vanities, them could impact upon my mind and my judgment on behalf of my people. Never. Craziness. That is craziness. And that is out of order. Out of order. Out of order. Dr. Brown wrote the opinion you saw yesterday. Where Dr. Brown is the best criminal lawyer in the Caribbean. <coughs> he ain't no Tamarin Chilaya. <coughs> and some of them who attack law. <coughs> ah. If I get a dog boy, I wouldn't even put them on the case. You have to know who you're listening to. <coughs> For a lot of them, I like the senior minister describe wolf in sheep clothing. They can't get away with Dr. Harris. They should know that I can't be bribed because they can't get me to say after them. They can't get that and they try. Well, how others can get that do? They can't get me to do what they want because I have to give God an account. I have to bring my judgment and experience and knowledge to bear in decision making. So how they think that we could be so easy? Dr. Brown in his judgment. Dr. Brown who came, huh? in his opinion, says in part, anything said <clears throat> in the transcript without more is legally inadmissible against the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. I mean, you can't go nowhere with that in a court. This hearsay evidence cannot be shown to have been in furtherance of a common design to accept or give a bribe. So you ask me, what the bribe be? What it is, how we say, he will give to them. They can't tell you. Nothing. Nothing. Because nobody could come to me with no foolishness. You come to me with a matter. That is for another portfolio. I tell you, take it to the minister. Because eventually it must come to the cabinet for decision making. That is how we do it. Good governance. And that is what this is about. He went on to say, from the court proceedings in England, there is absolutely absolutely no evidence in the excerpts released in court that the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis was part of a conspiracy to commit bribery. Absolutely no evidence. This is what the genius in criminal law in the Caribbean is saying. This is not a say after me lawyer. This is a serious lawyer who understands these things. Charles Wilkin also look at the document. He say he can't from the document find any wrongdoing that I have done that the presumption of innocence must stand. So what do you want me to say for? Are you innocent? If you have evidence to the contrary, Bring it to the court of law. That's all. That is the matter, you know. If they are. Well, part of this. Part of this. Is to distract you. That on the 30th of May. Is it the 30th of May? Denzel Douglas have to go to the court. Show the court. 
all the way he went and the Dominican passport. And first he said he had no passport. First he said it was no passport, it was a lie. He was going to sue me. And now he not only have the passport, he has traveled many places on it under the protection of Dominica. Henry went on to say, Dr. Brown, the Prime Minister, like all other citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis, is entitled to the presumption of innocence, equality before the law, and the protection of the law. In all the premises, therefore, it is clear beyond per adventure, that sounds like a Henry word, that the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis broke no law, took no bribe, he gave no bribe. The transcript with Dr. Henry Brown used amply support and prove this conclusion. Nothing in them but hearsay. And even when you look at the hearsay, the lawyer for me to break no law. Me and take no bribe. I gave no bribe. And in my life, I won't even consider them things. I leave those who those who are talking now. For those who are talking wanted us to take the public purse, take the public treasury, give them two million dollars for legal work, which they did not do. Those who are now talking wanted a consulting job for over a half a million dollars. Those who are now talking cash a check from the NHC, which I have. They cash a check from the accountant general, which I have to pay the getting for one job. You see who talking? That is why I said they wanted to play bingo. And I control the O. I control the O. That is why when they call the ministry to get another check, and it came to my knowledge, because I control the O, I say hold back the O, that check will not pass. And that is what burning them. They can't find no evidence. So they're clutching at straws. And I want to say to you, don't be fooled. I mean, today I got a call. All the way from New York. From Lenox. What's his name? Libad. And Lenox said to me, Dr. Harris, a lot of people said they were so glad to hear that Henry Brown, he described him as a labor lawyer. <laughs> the labor lawyer found that there was no bribe. Lord, they must say eat up themselves at the convention today. The labor QC found there was no bribe, none offer. That all the talk, them a talk, is hearsay and them say, Chalala. And asked me to talk Chalala. I'm busy doing people work. Who in a Chalala talk about Chalala? I can't talk about over what I ain't know. What am I going to talk about that for? So Lennox said, Dr. Harris, I know you. I didn't even need to have a legal luminary to tell me that you. Now don't get yourself mixed up in the foolishness. And especially over a watch. Foolishness. Foolishness. Out of order. No scan it call. All the way from Miami. She said, Dr. Harris, 
The Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you. Didn't. A good friend of mine from Nevis called me all the way from Canada. She said, Dr. Harris, you must understand there's evil in the world. Dr. Douglas is an evil man. Dr. Douglas has made a political career out of destroying people's character without evidence. Dr. Douglas took Eugene Hamilton to court, said that if Gene ever was to be elected, it will bring confusion in town. Took him to court, make him spend up money he didn't have to get lawyer. When the man only had a green card, Dr. Douglas said he had an American passport, took the man to the mud. Think Dr. Douglas nice? I had the opportunity to look over a release from Dr. Simmons in 1997. Two years after he had left office was when after Douglas was embarrassed, embarrassed in Antigua, Douglas decided to pay him his money. And Dr. Douglas said, Douglas sent the people up to his house, took out his generator, put it on the ground for days, for days. He came and said he needed it urgently. And for days and weeks, he had them on the ground. That is an evil man. And when the man could not pay his property tax, Douglas charged him. I think it was 11% Dr. Simmons reported in the press release. And he said, look at this wickedness. The man held my money to which I am entitled for over two years. Did not give me one cent interest but dips his hand in my money at 11% and property tax I could not pay because he withheld my money. That is Dr. Douglas. Dr. Douglas brought in the strategic communications group. There is a gentleman who shall be remain nameless. Dr. Douglas held a meeting with the team in Massey's house. Team of people who were doing the propaganda. Three of them told me about can't call the name. You got to know what you say. And the white people he brought to do the damage over the Marriott. This is what we learned. Since the disclosure came out earlier this year, that that worthless group that engaged in vagabondry in the politics of St. Kitts and Nevis, we hear in some confessions. The guy said to me, I didn't them people was so bad. When they finished with us, we were frightened. They tell us for this election, there's nothing named God. That is what they told the people because they believe that they have the psychology of bending people's mind. That they can make you believe what they want you to believe. They told the group that they will have to go hide themselves in the bushes of the homes of the opposition candidates. They tell them every crap of paper must be taken out of the garbage in the middle of the night. That was the team that he brought in. This man has no limits. This man has no limits. What I would say, you will never hear that I discuss in any exchange with anybody to do the government work. 
No land, no house, no water, no infrastructure in exchange for nothing. I came up the poor way. And somebody talk about Paul talking to Timothy. And Paul was talking about the grandparents of Timothy. How good they were. That they brought him up well. Well, my grandfather Peter Harris and grandmother Louisa brought me up well. No matter what people got, can't catch me I Can't catch me I Me not like Douglas. Douglas is a man naturally greedy. Naturally greedy. I don't have those lustful appetites. Riotous living does not appeal to me. I am a country boy at heart. Live with my people. Be with them from morning until night. So they live, so I live. That is why they love me so. That is why time after time they have stood with me and I with them. The government will continue to move forward. Notwithstanding this distraction. So I say to you, don't be bothered by this. You understand? This will pass for this is a hearsay and i am not going to get myself in some people say go on the radio and make a big statement no matter what you say douglas will continue the lie because he is a liar and i am not going out of my way to please them i will continue to focus on you that is why this year we announce how we will get homes to the civil servants. Many of you are out there, police officers, prison officers, teachers and nurses, working in government departments, wanting to get a house. We said that we will put $30 million dollars available in the first instance to help you at the lowest interest rate ever and by next week we will launch that program so you get more details so if you're working with the government you ain't have to stand in a long, a long line waiting for nhc because the rate you will get from the bank is the best rate for market financing. If you want to add on another bedroom, the fund's there for that. If you want to bring on something for your daughter or your son, the funds are there for that. If you want to buy and pay off for your land, the funds are there for that. If you want to give yourself a brand new roof, the funds are there for that. That is what you elected us to do the farmers he want a house indeed but you have to go on the job early and stay on the job so that he can be recorded as president he needs a house that is how he will get the house I want to say that we have determined that the young people with their varied interests in business will have an opportunity to get some support and we to the city B will put eight million additional dollars to help the first start program over six 150 people already benefited. The government is working for you. We have not, we have not forgotten the farmers and the fishers of Newtown, of George Street, of West Pasteur, 
of Old Road, of Sandy Point and Connery, and we said and Deep Bay. These are the major fishing communities. We say if you want to do your boat, you want to get your engine, you want to get fencing for your farm, you want to get harrowing for your farm, you will get the money at the best interest rate available. We will make it easy for you. And if perchance you were damaged by the hurricane and you ain't getting no help, we will give a portion of the support by way of a grant so you don't have to pay back for that. We are doing this for the young farmers. And we will continue to do more. More for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. More roads to be paved. More homes to be built. So people like Noel and all those people who need their homes can get their homes quickly. All of these things are to be done. MacDonald is here. MacDonald is on a special committee set up and organized to bring help to the so-called non-establishment workers or government auxiliary, auxiliary employees, GAE. Douglas, way back in 2007, king liar that he is, promised them that he will make them like civil servants. They will now begin to get their pensions and gratuities. He took away the honorarium they would have had in December since 2012. Not one cent for them. Team Unity inherited that unfairness. We set up a committee we took a McDonald, a young man with an independent mind who would call in on every program, say what he think is right and say what he think is wrong. And we put him on the committee along with a lady, I think, from Nevis, with Tarfrida Wachester, with Levi Bratcher, and a host of other people, so that this year's self, the non-establishment workers will be sorted out by the Team Unity Administration. This CSL, and we told the financial secretary, you all better hurry. Because if you all ain't hurry up, this year we will have to pay the people their 2% their holiday pay, which Dr. Douglas wrongfully robbed them of. We will restore it to the people if the officials do not get it right very quickly. I want to say to the people that I am standing firm and the trust I have built up with you. I am standing firm in your confidence. I am standing firm in the promise implicit in Shirley's song, Forever a Friend. I am standing firm knowing that the people of the country will not let me down. And I too will never let the people of St. Kitts down. I will not. So whatever plot they may have, whoever they may collude with against me, tell them it is written, no weapons formed against Timothy will prosper. Tell them that. Tell them that I feel I am a God-blessed child because of my mother's 10 and my father 33. They named me Timothy. Twice my name appeared in the Bible. First Timothy, second Timothy. 
something good has to come out of that. So to all of you who came out, to show your support, to show your solidarity, the progress of the country will go on. There will be no forced resignation. I will stand with the people and the people will stand with me. <laughs> whoever, whoever carried their suit to the dry clean, to get freshened up and nice up for his swearing in of the prime minister, tell them there is no vacancy. There is no vacancy in the office of the Prime Minister. And I don't care. I don't care how much rumors they spread. I don't care when they say people went to keep secret meeting for whatever do in the dark have to come out in the light. Whatever done in the dark has to come out in the light. And what will come out in the light is that none of them, none of them who are scheming can hold a candle of correction to me. For I have lived my life pleasing to the people and pleasing to my God. I want to thank my cabinet colleagues for their support. They say last cabinet was a confusion and people asked me to step down. Well, not one of them there asked me them foolish craziness. For if the ordinary people could understand that that a hearsay, that that a nonsense, but how come big people in a the cabinet they think no understand foolishness? So if people meet, they have a right to meet. If people meet on a boat, let them meet on a boat. Me not to say with that. For I have never, as a leader of the immunity, organized my leadership on the basis of mistrust nor fear. I went through this. Sony and all the others. Time after time we met as PLP. They asked, can you trust them? They asked. Can you trust them? Lord, you sure? I said, my comrades in the PLP, you can't lead with mistrust. You who are the prayer warriors, you pray. You pray. But I trusted the word of the leader of the CCM. The Honorable Vance Emery, who is here today. And I would say to you, my confidence in him has never one day been found wanting. Vance is an honorable man, a leader on whom you can depend. He brings the wisdom and experience and the selflessness in giving advice. You ain't have to second guess his motive. And that is why in the cabinet, with difficult matters, they will tell you, I don't make sure Vance give a word. And if Vance's word sound a kind of sound, I will know what to do. Because I could trust him implicitly confidently that he will do justice for the nation. Patrice is right. So when they say we have got confusion with me Lord you know I have no confusion in the cabinet. Everyone given a chance to say. Everyone because we are a team. And I, as a chair of cabinet, has the job of deciphering where the cabinet consensus is. And if I feel that the members are talking a bully cup, 
As my grandmother Louisa would say, I know what to do. I know what to do. Because I come to the chairmanship of the cabinet with experience. With experience. And I come with it with honesty and with a commitment to service and with a commitment for unity. That is what I come there with. Ah, that a bond them in the crap. So I say thanks to Patrice Leibard for his strong support. And Rambo, all of you will work ten times harder. You will work ten times harder for Patrice Leibard. And I will be there in the valleys, in the mountains, ensuring that he is returned to the parliament. Well, I will tell you what some will say about him. It's a good thing. Sometimes he's not easy. But in a good way. He's a man with his own mind. Then you don't tell me he's not an easy man. All this is unity talk. <laughs> we have to make a little joke. But Patrice is a friend. Patrice has been very helpful and very reliable. And I say that for the next election, we will go all out. All out. All out. All out. All out. To bring it to and like how I know my seat safe so. Like how I know my seat safe so. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. I can let baby J control tabernacle. And baby J friend here from Saddlers can control Saddlers for us. We are having a good time. It will be my pleasure though, as the Prime Minister, to ensure the victory for each member on the Team Unity's platform. All of them, I will give my very best. Slyburn Camper is here. The Saturday before the elections, when I should have been in number seven, thinking up the votes. Yvette now see me, Sonia now see me, see Rose there in the corner, she mapping up lodge for me, and Rosalind, and Sarah, and all these people. Where me be? I in Franklin's Road, with over 20 persons, tying up number four for Lindsey Grant. You told me. All was there. All said repeatedly when we met Dr. Harris. You will win your seat. And I won my seat. And when you went to the election results, the highest turnout in any constituency was in number seven. 79% of the people turned out. Bernie, I want to thank you. You don't talk much, but you're solid. Give Bernie now for the round of applause. I want to say thanks to all the people from number seven. Bellevue, Tabernacle, Mansion, Christchurch, Phillips, Molyneux, Borio, Upper and Lower, Large Village, Large Project and Atlas. You've made me proud. You've made me proud. When I left Franklin's, I'm going to end up now. You see, they think me a one. I am the clincher. I am the clincher for the constituencies that must come over to Team Unity. I am the clincher and I will deliver again. Victory!
But you think I went all the way. I told you the stories. Campaigning up St. Peter's. Up Parrot Village. Up Stapleton. Taking Viri and all these people from my constituency. Carrying them everywhere to campaign. You think it was easy? You think it was easy? And you would think some people who know that would be saying thanks. Ah, senior minister is a wise man, wolf in sheep clothing. You leave Franklin, so went to West Farm. Ah, to help number three. And I stood in West Farm for nine, three hours. The candidate stood 15 minutes and left. 15 minutes and left. I apologize. The guy is angry. Well, you see, man, just come and blah, blah, blah. I said, but I am the leader. There's a matter at home the candidate has to deal with. I am the leader. You will do this for me. My personal word is my bond to you. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're doing it. I had a lady there with me from Barbados assisting. And she said, Dr. Harris, I admire you. You're working in every constituency. I said, we have to deliver a unity government. Unity government. You ask some of the candidates, ask Hamilton. In fact, ask Lindsay, Valentine Lindsay, the chairman, former chairman of PAM. Ask him who was with them. I left Sundays. Gone up New Road. I go over there in that part. A road here, they tell me over there, East Pass there. Over here, Green One. We call there, you go up New Road on the right hand side. Gila, eh? Gila. No. Gilad or something up there. Gila, Understand? And I went doing the work for each and every candidate. So when you hear people at all, kill it's dark. I have this one in there. Well, how some of them get in? How they got in? Who? Brought the over the labor people. You see pet here? You see pet there? A warrior in number four. That is unity power. Come give me a hug. Come give me a hug. You understand that? You see, Marsha, dear Marsha, come. Marsha, come. For Marsha was a trouble house. I couldn't go to the last parliament. Good for Marsha. You remember that? Well, look, Marsha here. Timothy. How is again? How is again? The other day in Newtown, Douglas Sauer. Marsha. You go on with Timothy. Timothy will knock you about. I want to look after you and your sister. 20 years. He you remember know, Marsha and Janice. Marsha go down with ticket. Marsha register people from overseas. And Douglas disappoint Marsha. Douglas worthless vagabond. When I bring them in, I am delivering them to the team unity candidate and without that effort there will be no team unity government finally my joy will be to bring home number three with Akila Byron Mister. And we shall, we shall deliver number three to its rightful place in the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. 
There is lots of love and lots of energy for Akila. A strong team of experienced people like Victor and Claudette and your blood like Damien and all the other people. We shall go a victory bringing in number three to the government. I say thank you. And there is a good wind blowing in number six. Good wind blowing in number six. I want you to be on the campaign team. Baby Joe, you have to talk to the cook. You have to talk to the cook. He's a good man to come on the team. It has been a wonderful evening. I am standing with you for you. I am standing in service for my country. I am standing firm for progress and good governance. Jam down gave me the lyrics. We have worked too hard to build team unity. Do not let Douglas and the power-hungry critics break unity down. Thank you. God bless you. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS. St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.